All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to sketch a hyperbola. All right, so remember that in general, if you were to look at your formula sheet, you would have something like x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to positive or negative 1. And so now we know that uh, a few things about this. We know that h and k correspond to the center of our hyperbola. And so the center is h comma k. So keep that in mind when we're graphing this because if we look at our question over here, we have x plus 1 and y minus 2. So because of that, we know the center of our hyperbola, which is the first thing you want to figure out when you're graphing, is going to be negative 1 comma 2. So the first thing is get your center. And notice, notice I have a negative 1 here when it's x plus 1. And the reason for that is because I could maybe just make a, make a side note over here that if I have x plus 1, what that really means in this form, in x minus h form, is x minus a minus 1 will give you the x plus 1. And so h would then have to be negative 1. So you can see that h is negative 1. That's why it's negative 1 comma 2. So when we're graphing this out here, you basically want to find that center. So let's find that center. So we go to our graph here. Remember that this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And so the center is at negative 1 comma 2. So I'm going to put that point right on my graph. So that's the first thing that you want to do is get the center of the graph. So see there we have negative 1 comma 2 is my center. All right, so we also know that uh, in this uh, equation here, this is in standard form for a hyperbola, we also know the a and the b value kind of mean something with my hyperbola. And so my slopes of my asymptote are always going to be plus or minus b over a. So you might want to remember that um, for the test. You need to memorize this, plus or minus b over a. And that's the slopes of my asymptote. So what I can do when I'm when I'm sketching this out, we know my rise, remember slope is rise over run. Hopefully you remember that, so it's rise over run. So the slope's plus or minus b over a. So in this case here, in our example here, when we know that our slope or slopes of your asymptote will be plus or negative, rise is going to be, well, we got 16 here, so it's b squared. So what number squared would equal 16 and we know it's 4 squared. So here we know that b is equal to 4 because it's something squared is giving us a 16. So b is 4. And then we know that a is equal to the square root of 9 which is 3. And so you can see that because it would be a squared so it would be 3 squared would give you a 9 over there. So the slopes of the asymptotes is 4 over 3. And so what you can do is just basically go from the center point that we have here and we can uh, count up four. So let's see, one, two, three, four, okay. And down four, that's the rise. So one, two, three, four here. And then from there we can count over to the right three, because that's run is three, one, two, three. And left three, one, two, three, okay, perfect. And so now we know the rise is that and the run is that, so we know that our that our asymptotes are going to run diagonally through this kind of box you might want to draw here. Just draw a box around there. And we know our asymptotes are going to run diagonally through that. And so those are my asymptotes. I'll just write that down there. Those are my asymptotes. And okay, so then we look at this here and we now have to figure out is this a vertical hyperbola or a horizontal hyperbola? And so we know that if it's positive one, then that means it's a horizontal hyperbola. And if it's negative one, then it's a vertical hyperbola, all right? And so, I don't know, you may remember that a little bit because if it's negative, I don't know, nobody really likes negative, so we could kind of think of that as a, a pout, a pouty face there. All right, so negative ones are pouty. All right, so they're vertical. 
And so now when we want to graph this out, I'll just change colors here. When well, we know that our graph goes to this point and then it goes along these asymptotes here on both sides. And no, notice you ride the asymptotes. Don't creep away from the asymptote. It gets closer and closer to that asymptote. And then the vertical asymptote kind of did the same thing on the bottom half there and it rides along that asymptote. Okay, perfect, so that's our hyperbola. That's exactly what it looks like. So that's how you graph a hyperbolic function or a hyperbolic relation. Okay, and so um, now we gotta answer some questions. We gotta get the domain, the range, the vertices. Well, the slopes of the asymptotes we already figured out was here. So let's get the domain. And so the domain, as you can see here, the domain is all the x values and it's going to the left forever and to the right forever. So the domain is just x is an element of the real numbers. And the range, well, this is a little bit trickier, but you gotta see here, the range is the y values. And so if I, if I count up here, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it starts at six and it goes up from six. So we know y is greater than or equal to six. But we also know that it goes down from this point here. So it's going down from negative two. So it's y is less than, because it's going down. Notice we're at negative two and it's going down. So y is less than or equal to negative two. And then the vertices are just these points here. And so the vertices here are gonna be, well, negative one and six. So negative one comma six. And we also know there's another vertices at negative one comma, let's see, one, two, negative two. Negative one, negative two. And so that's the vertices, the range, and the domain. All right, and so that's how you graph a hyperbolic relation. All right.